What's going on, everyone? It's time for another Vox Verdict. I'm joined by Jess and Tvon, and today we're going to be discussing Moldova's song. They've invited back Natalia Gordienko, who won the selection last year in 2020. The song she's bringing this year is called Sugar, and we're going to be talking about how we feel about it, as well as how it might be performing at Eurovision. <laughs> So Moldova has a bit of a track record of sending quirky songs that tend to be up-tempo and danceable. This one definitely fits into that category. Uh, I'm going to go to you first, Tvon. How do you feel about Natalia Gorienko's song this year? So first of all, last year Prison was one of my favorites, which is quite an unpopular opinion because Prison was not really loved by the community, but I absolutely loved it. And I, I have to say it's the same for Shira, it's definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. I mean, Philip Kirikorov did this song and he always does really well songs, well-made songs. And um, yeah, I just really like it. But the music video is definitely very, very quirky with the dancing ice creams and yeah, but it, it's, it works, That's, it, it works. Yeah, and one of the things that you can expect from the Dream Team, as you mentioned, uh, Philip Kierkeroff is is uh, he's been on a little bit of a promotion tour, appearing on various <laughs> various television networks, uh, speaking about this song. But you know the the other people that he works with, uh, Dimitrios Kontopoulos and uh, Sharon Bond, they, these are the kind of entries that they're that they're known for. Um, Jess, how does this song land with you? So I really like Sugar, which is no surprise to anyone. Um, I, I mean, I think what I love about it is just that it's this kind of very fun and happy, upbeat song that kind of makes you want to get up and dance. And then when you watch the music video, it's full of kind of colour and lots of different kind of elements brought into it. Dancing ice creams, which I love and I want them on stage in Rotterdam. Um, and if they need anyone, then I'll happily put on a suit. But just the whole package kind of pun intended is very sweet and sugary um and i just i just love a song that i can bop to and this is the perfect song to do that with mm -hmm. this is one of the songs this year that is kind of exactly what it says on the, on the tin it's sugar it's it's you know light fun it's it's danceable um for me personally it, it's not the type of entry that i would really love uh, but there are things that i like about it i do feel like it's easy on the ears it's not something that you know i i would want to turn off if it came on um and it, it is somewhat for me a little bit reminiscent of uh, a you know kylie minogue style of of singing you know there's there's kind of uh, a, a sultriness to her voice and it's a it's you know it's a, it's an up-tempo bop right so the kind of the kind of music that you know Kylie Minogue would put out to appeal to her fan base um, but you know still still enough uh, of a difference there but yeah as a song I wouldn't say that it's the most original um, we kind of know we know that we get these kinds of songs for Eurovision every year um, and and yeah that, that's really like the the drawback for me like I, there are plenty of bops this year, uh, but some of them have con considerably more character than uh, this one does, in my opinion. But it, it doesn't surprise me that this this is a song that that does see some some attention because you know I, I think the Dream Team knows that this is a formula that works. Um, but you know, putting those feelings aside, uh, talking about potential at Eurovision, Tuan, how do you feel like this song may perform? I don't really know. Kind of gives me Maruv vibes, but they're not dark vibes, but really Barbie, sugar, happy. Um, I think it can do very well if it's got very good staging, which it probably will have because Filip Kirkorov is involved. Um, as far as her vocals go, I'm not really sure because we saw her perform Prison Live a couple of times last year and it wasn't the best but sugar is less challenging vocally and it's been a year so she's probably improved um well if if it comes across well live i think she's definitely going to qualify whereas in top 10 i cannot really see her in the top 10 but uh who knows doritos in 2018 wasn't expected to be in the top 10 either and they finished top 10 so who knows what will happen 
Yeah, and and using that example specifically, it, it was a song that, you know, it, like it was it was a decent song, but just was it wasn't really making an impact until the the rehearsal started, and we saw that they turned it into kind of like a, a theater production with some really creative elements, having the backup dancers be dressed exactly like they're almost like doubles of the the band themselves. Um, and and again, that was a, a, a Kirchhoff concept. Um, Jess, do you do you feel the same way as Tvan as far as、uh, not being a top ten but potentially a qualifier? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I can I could I could easily see this song qualifying to the final, but because like whoever one of you mentioned it is quite like a simple song, and I feel like there's they've got a lot of competition from some of the potential qualifiers, so I feel like probably some somewhere mid table in the final I could see this finishing. Depending on how the performance and the staging is,、mm. yeah, I, I I tend to feel like you know with with all the things that we know about how this could go, it, it seems like it's destined for a place in the final.、Um, it wouldn't be my choice, and、uh, I, I am a bit concerned about how、uh, looking at the semifinal. There are a lot of solo female bops. Um, and there are ones that I would certainly like to see more in the final. However, they all have their own factors that might work against them or work in their favor.、Uh, this one seems to be a bit safer with with that、uh, in mind. So I don't know. I, I I could I could expect it in the final, but it, it I, I just hope that when we see the final product, it will feel like a deserved place and not like you know not playing it too safe, not not going for you know elements that are that are, that are too tacky. But you know, obviously. All kinds of approaches approaches that you could have with this kind of song. So let's deliver a verdict, Tuan. What reaction do you give to Sugar? I'm gonna give it a love. It's just a guilty pleasure. I love it. Okay, and Jess. I like the song, so it gets a smiley face from me. Okay, for me, I'm gonna give it the neutral face this time.、Uh, I could potentially like it a bit better if they really nail that staging, which a lot of people seem to think that they will. So we'll have to see. My feelings might change.、Um, going over to the rest of Team Eurovox, we don't have any people who dislike the song, which you know could be a, a, a good sign, you know, as far as we're concerned, at least.、Um, four people have the chin scratch emoji, think that it could be a little bit better. We've got nine people who are like me, who have the neutral face, not totally feeling it, but aren't necessarily bothered by it. Thirteen people like the song, so that I think bodes well. Again, <laughs> as far as our team goes, three people have given it the hard eyes,、um, and maybe maybe a surprise for some people, but、uh, no fuegos on this one.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, so not not a favorite as far as Team Eurovox goes, but maybe it's different for you. What do you guys think about Moldova? Is this your your favorite song for the year, or one of your favorites? Do you see it in the final? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Eurovox because we're discussing all of the entries for Eurovision 2021, and we love to know what you think. And we will see you guys. On the next video, take care.